Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today, I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a cargo ship. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And immediately, our palette. You can see, it comprises mostly of terracotta and concrete, although I recommend using whatever you can instead of those two blocks when possible. Because concrete is a little too versatile. You can see this entire harbor, I recommend having these nearby is pretty much made completely of concrete and terracotta. I'm using different blocks from time to time. Like this, I use some red sandstone here. And what do you know, I have a cool looking crane. With the, all these in mind, then find your building area. If you already have a harbor, maybe place it close by, but it doesn't have to be at port, especially if the loading bay is a little smaller than what you want for your boat. And then start building by placing some gray concrete into the water. You can make the whole whatever block you want, but I strongly recommend gray concrete. And try centering it if possible. Of course this is a 2x2 two two center build, though it's not going to be completely possible. But still, make an attempt. Then, you can see our blocks are in the water, but this isn't how you do it actually. You want to make it go into the water like this, and then use the, these parts here as little things to make a curvature into this. Use a circle generator potentially for this part, and then what you want to do is make it go up and start going up a little bit more drastically like that, and then one final layer. If need be, you can include another layer, and then extend this for most of the build. The front needs to smoothen out into a singular line, so you can't have a very flat front. And then the behind end of it needs to have a propeller. You're going to need it to arc up like this, what I'm doing with my cursor, so that way you can have the propeller. With these in mind, you can build yourself the basic shape of the hull. Right here, I have this very basic cylinder, and there's not much to say about it. You'll need sponges, especially if your boat's a little further into the water. I might move this down a few blocks if need be. And then from here, you need to make that rounded back for the propeller. Of course, I'm going to actually have to lower this because, yeah, you can't put a propeller above water. But essentially, you can see how I go out like this, and then I have this sudden jet upward, and then I curve it out in order to go to the correct layer. Do that for the back, and then you need to round it out. So that way, it goes here, and then reaches this wall, using a little bit of world edit to make it faster. And then, you'll want to create almost a circle like shape like this where you go three two one and you can use that formula for a lot of things even if it ends up being a little larger or has some repeat numbers in there it's a little complicated to explain but you can see how using some basic numbers i can round it out relatively quickly i can use this flat end here which would around about maybe nine and then one one three four and then the rest of the hull of course, it needs a little tweaking, but you have the general shape there, which is what you need. When rounding out the back and filling in this area here, there's a common mistake a lot of builders do, and that's doing a very simple layer like this. You can see I go two, two, and more twos. You can see how this gets boring and unrealistic rather quickly. Instead, you might need to make it go further into the rest of the hull, like this. Where I were to scrape a couple blocks off there, and then I could make it go to three here, and then two, and potentially even one here where I do that. And while that's not perfect either and needs its own work, you can see how that's a bit better. Essentially, avoid obvious patterns. You want to make things look curvy, not a staircase, because when you do a staircase, it makes it look all blocky, and while this is a block game, that's not exactly flattering. So you need to be a bit careful with that. Along with that, then you might want to make this a bit flatter here, in case you want to put lettering on the side, because while this shape works for most boats, who knows, you might want to put words on it. Right here, you can see a very simple design for the back, it's all rounded. And it might be a little hard to do, but it gets the point across. It's a rounded back, and I can put the propeller down here. You can see, nice flat area to put it. From here, what you need to do is mirror it, and then we can move on to the front. But, of course, it might be a bit difficult to do this different design. 
If you want, you can do a mirror of the front like I'm about to show, and then have areas for the propellers on either side, preferably carved out. Now for the front, you can see, nice and rounded, even a little bow right there, although that isn't necessary and will likely be removed shortly. But what you want to know in order to make rounded things like this is a number rule. I kind of just coined the term, there's probably a more formal thing to go about it. I go 3, 2, 1, and then I go back to 2, and then to 3. You know, this is like a parabolic curve. Finally, if you guys have taken algebra class, it's going to be useful for Minecraft building of all things. Anyways, I can go up here and do 2 instead of 3 inst to avoid making a perfect sphere. And then right here, you can see, I go right back, doing 4 right there, because of course, it would be off-center otherwise, and now I have a shape I can go off of. I can fill it in like that. That pretty much comes down to logic. It's up to you how you do that. No real tips there besides don't have too thick layers and then drop offs. Essentially, this is bad design. This is good design. And you can see, now you can make any ship hull size you want, any shape, using this very simple trick. Now, with that in mind, what we want to do is a small extra detail where I thicken up the sides. Using this align tool here makes it much easier to count and much easier for videos. You can see the area before it becomes curved is 48 blocks. What we want to do is go into the middle half. This is 48, so do some division there. And you want to go into the middle 32 blocks. So do some basic counting there. And then what you'll attain is a nice little area. From here, what you want to do is Make sure you actually counted right, that was incorrect. You can go down to the bottom and add extra blocks all along here. That way, it's a little bit more plump and rounded, rather than turning to a complete cylinder. For all I know, you might want to even add something like this to the bottom. That way, it has a bit of extra depth. And then, once you have all that done, you'll have yourself a completed hull, minus the extra accents and the lettering. Right here, you can see I now have the hull of the ship completed. Still flooded, but that can be fixed with, well, sponges. Make sure to section off areas to prevent reflooding using sand. And now what you want to do is put in some text. Now, considering the size of your hull, if you roughly match this tutorial, I don't like going block by block since it slows it down and cookie cutter builds are a little boring. Perhaps, you know, try making your own small changes. What you want to do is make some text. And, well, it doesn't have to be anything super cool. I mean, I'm just going to put down some random stuff. I mean, that might be interpreted as a GS for gear saw. I don't know. But something like that, and then put a dot, and then put in the name of the ship. You know, that really adds some character to the thing. And then we can start doing the deck and the crates, interiors, and all that. Now, I gave the ship a name, it's up to you to interpret whatever BC means, and then I have this red line in order to cut off the hole from the deck. This is where our ground level is going to be, one block below, and it's a little close to the cranes, so you might need to increase the size of nearby cranes if you happen to do a cargo ship, or you could accommodate your current cargo ship for that. Make sure to put the name on both sides. And then, there's an optional detail you might want to do. Right here, you can see what you can add on, is you can go here, and then change the bottom blocks to black concrete or another block. Although this might not exactly work for most builds, so it's something you might want to consider, especially if you didn't use something like grey concrete. If you have something like light blue concrete, then you might want to do blue or red or anything else on the below water portions. However, don't make it exactly on the line where there's the transition. Because when you do that, it comes off as too much too quick. Because, you know, you already have that water line and then a the whole color change, it doesn't work well. With all this in mind, it's time to go on deck. And this can be whatever you want. I recommend just doing more grey concrete or something like that, especially since most of it is going to be covered by crates. With the deck now in place and a railing here, along with the cranes being a little bit taller so I can fit everything, it's now time to add your decorations up here. 
Of course, the first instinct would be to add crates, but that's actually going to be one of the last things you want to do. First off, you need some way to anchor the ship. Using something called mooring, where you attach lines into little posts here, you can make sure the ship doesn't move. You can use something like black concrete for this. Essentially, you need a couple of poles with walls on them to make it look like something was tied around them. Of course, there's only so much you can do, but perhaps make the ones in use use a different wall, such as blackstone, while the ones not in use could use andesite. Of course, I just came up with that right now. And now what you need to do is add little holes for the ropes, like this. Make sure they're a little bit taller and shorter to make them more noticeable. And then, you'll need to add this to the back as well. However, be careful because mooring lines, if they snap, can cause serious workplace injury, which means you might want to place a little bit of your caution blocks around, alternating between black and yellow concrete. Or you could do terracotta instead to make it look a bit faded. Now, I have my mooring lines in, attached to the harbor itself. Of course, blackstone walls if it's connected, and a site if it's not, and then some back here. I also added some hazard plating because of course, mooring lines snapping is actually a very large workplace hazard. This one didn't really have anywhere to attach to, but I put it in anyways. Another small change is that thing where I mentioned about black concrete, I did it with red terracotta instead. There isn't really anything else to talk about with this thing, all I can really say is I did that. Now, what you need to do is have a mast, and this is like a little tower where they put on the foghorn, the lights, the radar, etc. There's two of them. One of them goes on top of the actual structure which I'm going to be building shortly, but the other one will need some lights and a foghorn. Get out some various quartz related blocks, or whatever you want, make sure to use iron bars and similar blocks that aren't full blocks, and then, after that, you should have some sort of small tower. I highly recommend looking at pictures online due to its incredibly varied design. Right here, you can see I have a forward mast, and there's no fog horn present, but it has the navigation lights, which is the main purpose, since the other one also has a fog horn. Although, it might be a little hard to incorporate since a tiny little loudspeaker isn't really possible in Minecraft, so it's okay if you exclude it. Continuing the hazards all the way up until here, and utilizing smooth stone slabs right here. A ladder to get to the top, no control panel because it doesn't really fit. And now I have a center mast, or I mean front. There is no center mast, keep that in mind, that's where the crates go. Now, build a wall. You might want to use the same kinds of blocks like the smooth quartz. Maybe you want to do white concrete instead. And now, changing it back today, since I've made my point about the lighting on it. Well, you need crates. And I've already done a bit of a tutorial on how to do crates, the harbor tutorial. I highly recommend watching it if you have nowhere to put your ship. And essentially what you want to do is make some boxes out of concrete. Make each one a different length, although it might not work on the ship itself, so maybe all the same length. And then, you'll want to give them different colors, and then lastly, you need to give them different designs. You can see here, it makes it look like they have company logos on them and whatnot, although it could be interpreted as graffiti. To an extent, you might want to go in and use their terracotta versions instead of the concrete versions in order to have orange and orange here, which looks a bit more natural. It's up to you what you want to do with the crates. All you need to do is establish where the crates end and the control tower begins. I recommend doing that with a wall, similar to what I have right there. Right here, you can see that I have an area for the crates. Walls on either side, and then spacing them. Now, you need to figure out the measurements of the crates, since you already know what a crate should look like approximately. For our measurements, what you need to do is find the area between your two walls here. This area is going to be the tower, probably incorporating this wall into it fully. And now, this area is 40 blocks wide, so let's do some basic division. Each one can be about 8 blocks wide, which is what I'm going to do since mine is 40. Of course, I expect you guys to have slightly different cargo ships because copying measurements slows you down and generally produces copycat builds, not necessarily the best if you're trying to build something unique. And now, with your area, do another division. This one is 12 blocks wide, 
and each crate is three blocks, which means I can have four crates. And yes, I'm sounding like a math problem here, but trust me, it's useful. Because once I pull out my extender tool for world edit, you can see now I have one crate here. And then I can repeat this process and they'll all nicely fit in. Make sure that it doesn't end up taller than your tower. And potentially for the inner crate, so basically anything not at the edges, you might want to make it one, one kind of crate taller. So if it's three crates here, four crates here. And then once you have all that in place, add your graffiti slash logos and make sure that your plans for the tower do not make it so the crates are taller. So I'm going to say my tower is maybe about this tall right here. And yeah, you can see this could potentially create height issues with the crates. So you need to be careful with that, especially if you have nearby structures like cranes. Now, while you're doing this, you might run into an issue. What if you mismeasured? You can see here, I said it was 12 erroneously, even though there's no way this could have happened. This is an odd numbered build. So what do you do in this situation? The solution is to simply move some of them back. And I'm going to be using Hobiv World Edit for this one. And here's what you can do. This is perfectly doable in vanilla, don't worry. So you can do structure blocks for this or whatever you can. And then you move them over to the edge. And now we have this empty space in the middle. What you do, simply make them wider. Nobody's really going to notice. And if they do, Eh, they're not really going to care. So now you don't have to adjust the entire build. You don't have to mess with your crate measurements. You can simply keep on building by having the middle ones be wider. There's nothing else you really need to do. Continue up with your crates and continue as normal. The crates are now all in place and you can see they look quite good. For the top layer, since I didn't have room to chop off a crate of either side because this is 11 blocks wide, Instead, I made each one go in by one block, so I only have three crates on this layer. And now, it's time to do the lettering on the side. You can either leave them plain like this, you can do a bit more formal where you use very close colors, or you could make it look like it was graffitied like these ones. It's up to you, just do random shapes, maybe even put some lettering, text, etc. And then down here, put iron bars when you're done. These little things kind of look like they're railings to keep these crates from falling. And I like that idea, so I'm going to leave it in. And now it's time for the tower. You should use white concrete for this. So replace whatever you have here for your wall. By the way, your wall should go up to your final crates. Here's a quick reference, maybe just one block lower. And then you want to have multiple floors, probably about three though. Although, you might only have enough for two. So, create lines, and then you can divide up the floors separately. For all I know, you might want to make the top open air, although that might not necessarily work. But for now, all you need to do is make a simple square for a building. Now, I have a very simple control tower. What I did is I made a white box. And then, I cut off this part here because otherwise I wouldn't be able to fit the front well, back mast. Then from here, I outlined it in gray concrete. You should see the rough shape where the thing starts and ends. Right here is the end of the white part, so I cover it in gray concrete. You can go about this in many different ways and it's not very important how you go about it. Then we need an interior. And also, I did this cool band here. Nothing very interesting about it. All I know is that I had concrete and I decided to do it. Now these areas are currently empty, and we are going to have a very limited below deck. Right here, a very simple map because it's pressed right up against the crates. Nobody's going to see anything. And then up here, we have the actual window. You should put down some chainmail armor stands potentially and submerge them in blocks to create keyboards for a computer. But I recommend seeing what I do next for that. Essentially, these are office spaces, and you should have things like bookshelves and other miscellaneous office things up here so that way the crew can work effectively. Now it's time to show off the interior and right here pretty simple stuff. You can see some paintings here, various decorations around, a carpet here, the inner blocks are wool while the gray carpets are in fact only carpets, bookshelves keep the crew entertained when they're off duty, accidentally fall down here where it's not complete. 
I'm only going to be doing a little bit of a bedroom for everyone and then an engine room. And that's about it. Usually it's a cargo hold, but you have a bunch of crates there already. If need be, fill it up with more crates. And now we have this little bit of an entertainment area, a nice wooden couch, and a fake digital screen of the area, which is not terribly accurate, but still, it's good enough. Now here we have a computer desk, but this looks admittedly pretty bad. Of course we have the mouse here with the button, and yeah, that's about it. So what you need to do is do concrete powder, or use pistons for this, and then water bucket, and what do you know? I already have a chainmail helmet stuck in the ground here, so now it looks like a real computer. Substitute the stone button out for blackstone if need be. And now we have a bunch of things up here, not terribly interesting, but the more random redstone components that you add, the more it looks like it could actually steer a ship. Now with this area done, it's time to add our second mast. You see this one here, looks a little goofy, but it's lighting and that's about it. Well, do another one of those, except you're going to do different things on it. You're going to need a radar, some lights, and other things. I recommend looking up pictures online, but a radar is the most important thing for this one. And now, we also need smokestacks, but this part's actually pretty easy. You get out your concrete, and then you build a pillar up. And then, after a while, you place it on some campfires, and what do you know, it's bellowing smoke constantly which is what you want to do. To build a tower, you can use my palette tips. I recommend, well, I'll just go look at it right here to make it easier. You can see I recommend gray and black concrete. So try those blocks. You can use different blocks if need be like light gray concrete. And then we need the propeller. And that one will be pretty easy and will be added very soon. For the smokestack, there's an extra detail. And instead of placing down simple campfires, there's something else you might want to try instead. And ironically, this is my first time ever using gray glass in this world. That's actually kind of shocking. And now, what you want to do is place some down here. I don't have connected textures on because I updated my forge version and then promptly didn't update that mod. But you place down a few blocks. Don't make them super uniform like this. You need to make it a bit more jagged, like this. And then you'll want to add some light gray towards the top to make it look like it's dark smoke down there and it starts dissipating when it goes up. Of course, make it a little bit thicker than that, but when you have it completed, it can now be seen from any distance rather than campfire particles, which can be a little finicky at times. After this, the propeller. You don't have to do terribly much for this. You place down a little bit of almost a base plate like this, and then carve into that, and then you'll want to place down a block here, another block, and yeah, you pull out your white gray, and this gets pretty easy. You do something like this, although this isn't actually fully submerged and probably wouldn't work, so building something small would work. Although, make sure it actually looks like blades, because otherwise you're not going to be taken seriously with something like this. Make sure you perfect the design, and if need be, move it lower down. Now, to finish off the build, I have a pretty basic engine room. Although it doesn't really resemble real ones, still, it has a bunch of details to make it look plausible regardless. This here could potentially be some sort of oil filter thing, or simply storage, along with some pipes and random redstone trickeries here that do absolutely nothing. Then, we have some copper to look like wires and pipes going around, a logo for the imaginary company that has this, and then some oil, because of course, high fuel oil is what a cargo ship uses. Another computer, probably using that kind of concrete there wasn't the best choice, but oh well. And then some more on the floor to make it more interesting. An OSHA violating shelf right here with some various storage items, you know, don't get too close to it, you might be uh, squished. And then some very basic sweeping quarters. Nothing too interesting here besides some lockers. And now, this unlit candle might resemble a soda can, so there's that. And now, your cargo ship is complete. You have this massive area here, very dark, but it's completely usable for storage or whatnot, if you want to make it unrealistic, turn it into a base, more crates, etc. So now, you have a cargo ship, and you might even have a harbor with it in order to have it docked. It's a really good thing to have for any city build, so I highly recommend trying it out. 
and if you need a harbor, well, should be appearing in the top right with an iCard. Now, with all this, well, you have a cargo ship, and here's a little glance at it during the night. And there's not very much to say about it, the only lights on it come from that window there, and then the mast. So, it's not a super spectacular night build, but still looks good regardless. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. And while you're on the ship, make sure to stay away from any mooring lines, it's quite dangerous to stay over there. Enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw, out.